my interest of course is in gain and if I see a equivalent circuit of a normal amplifier using a MOS transistor very very low frequency circuit nothing very great happens and so let us say it is a common source and I figure it out that this is what is going to be seen by me. this current source and this R0 some way related to the device. This is a small signal low frequency equivalent circuit of an amplifier common source we will come back to it again I am just trying to say you. So, my worry is if in a circuit if I have a current source which essentially I am showing you something like this. Now, this current source is a function of G m essentially means it has something to do with the device as well as the amount of biasing I am going to do with it. And since G m is what is most worrying me I would like to have a model of a transistor which will replace or which will give me equivalent of G m expression because at the end of the day I can only solve something numerical. So, I must create a equivalent circuit for a current source in terms of device parameters and once I know what those device parameters I have to govern which will control my G m and similarly R 0 then I will say I have designed an amplifier for a gain of V 0 by V n which you can see very clearly is the if the gain is simple like this it is minus G m R 0 parallel R l divided by there is no input impedance right now. So, it is infinite there. So, 1 upon infinite. So, zero, there is nothing one, 1 only up here 1 plus that. So, obviously, if I want to control gains I must control G m and R 0. Okay. If R l is very very small compared to R 0 I am not very keen about R 0 either, but in normal case I may be interested to know what are the values of R 0 and what are the values of G m so that I can control V 0 by V n that is my ultimate aim. Okay. Of course, this is a simple circuit we will actually modify the circuit more complex way and we will see uh, whether we can have some equivalent model of a transistor which represents equivalently of this circuit. Okay. Because at the end of the day when I design a chip I have processes and I have sizes you have done a mass transistor theory earlier. So, we know we can only control sizes W by L s we can control partially mobility which is not very much in my hand which is technology dependent. So, all that I will control is threshold and W by L and of course, power supply is also not in my hands by technology node someone say okay, 1.2 volt supply that is the end of it. To some extent therefore, control is only on the sizes and also on the threshold I adjust. So, I want to create a model for G m R 0 many other things. So, that I will be able to control G m and R 0. So, that I can attain a gain of my choice that is the design if I analyze uh, analysis is so straightforward, but I want to know I want a gain of 10,000 for 10,000 and above above means I do not mean how much, but 10,000 minimum I want. So, what should I choose the values in a device? So, that when I interconnect on the chip that all circuit it will give me a gain at least 1000, 10,000 or maybe lower or higher whichever value you choose. That is the difference between I keep saying between analysis and design I am now want to know this value. Now, I figure it out that that is not so straightforward. if I control something I will figure out something I may lose. So, how to get optimal use or optimal parameters so that I get whatever everyone is asking. I can attain to a great extent that values and that is what the design is all about. Okay. So, if I had to create a equivalent circuit or equivalent model for this I must do something we have done in second year, but I will do little more detail here that time you know you probably were not very receptive at least uh, many of you I should I know about. So, now at least I have word again. 
so that you know that why these values are relevant for. For example, threshold, how do we control a threshold? Okay. Sometimes that threshold control is beyond you, sometimes it is well within you. The same technique which I am using for analog threshold control can be used even in the case of digital circuit where we may probably do what called power, low power circuits. So, threshold control is a major area where we actually look for design. Okay. At times technology forces you to do only this much. Okay. Then circuit wise what do I do? If everything is fixed by technology then what do I design? So, there must be some circuit way of fooling a device or vice versa we may say. So, that we still have some leeway to design. Okay. So, that is the aim of this course. Uh, we were looking for MOS transistors already for this is all n channel device and we say that if VGS is positive and uh, substantially higher okay, uh, one can see from here it is going to say let us say VDS is 0 and source is also grounded, substrate is also grounded. Uh, it is like a MOS capacitor which has a oxide thickness of T ox which has a dielectric uh, or permittivity of that dielectric is epsilon ox and uh, because we are applying VGS as we did last time initially there will be a depletion charge because we want to balance charge put on the metal plate or gate plate and this since positive <coughs> gate voltage is applied you need negative charges to appear. So, first thing the holes move away and you create a depletion there. And I said last time that this can continue infinitum because that depletion thickness can keep on increasing, but it does not occur because one figures out that at certain value of threshold VGS equal to VT, the electric field in the depletion layer is large enough. So, that the whole electrons which are constantly generated everywhere including depletion layer they get separated in depletion layer because there is a electric field. Please remember Poisson's equation says d by d x is rho by epsilon. If there is no rho, so there is no p is equal to n means no rho. So, it con e is constant or 0. In most cases the neutral regions have electric field assume 0. Whereas, in the depletion layer you have an electric field and that can separate electrons and holes. At the point where it occurs we say it is PGS is actually defined as threshold. Now, this is what we said last time and we said depletion layer width is proportional to uh, the surface potential that is drop in the semiconductor surface and uh, one can see it is inversely proportional to the doping in the substrate, whereas size itself is a function of any okay. size which is called Fermi potential uh, surface potential twice of Fermi potential is given in this expression. So, we say if I had 2 phi f I already term in any in x d I have another term in any okay. So, there are there is a transcendental equation. So, for a given any you can give, get a good charge equi equivalent of this you have to solve a quadratic kind of nonlinear terms. Okay. Now, we defined further I mean this is what we said last time if we continue to increase VGS further above V t uh, we need more minus negative charges in the semiconductor and now we say the depletion layer has already reached its maximum and we said this occurs because now free electrons can be created holes will still move down, but electrons can come to the surface which is called the inversion layer because it is opposite of the substrate which we started with. Not going to two details of MOS transistor MOS capacitor theory one can say VGS which is now equal to VT when threshold starts uh, the turn on start it is 2 phi f which is the maximum surface potential which we reach which is twice the Fermi level minus Fermi energy Q phi minus Q s which is semiconductor charge divided by C ox and this uh, as I said it stems from the very simple relationship if you wish one can derive very fast not very accurately, but psi s plus V ox is equal to V g s. Now, we know d is epsilon s e s d is assuming the electric vector and we assume right now which is not very bad assumption across the insulator and silicon d is continuous this is slightly worrisome essentially I am saying epsilon e s is epsilon ox e ox. 
the E E for both is same that is the continuity of D vector along the semiconductor to oxide. Once we assume this we also know the charge in the semiconductor can be written as epsilon s capital E is the field and small e is the dielectric permittivity. So, the charge is minus epsilon s E s d is continuous. So, I have one relation here and another relation here. Now, I can say oh I can now start playing games. Okay. I say v from here this expression you can choose from here I can write epsilon s E s is equal to epsilon ox by T ox. Okay. Now, this term from T ox is coming from here because this E ox oxide voltage whatever you are seeing the field across this is nothing but voltage divided by the thickness. So, this V ox by T ox is epsilon ox okay, not epsilon E ox. Okay. Now, this epsilon ox by T ox by capacitor theory is the oxide capacitance per unit area. Okay. So, this C ox is defined as oxide capacitance per unit area. So, C ox into V ox is minus Q s is that clear Q s is by Gauss's law is minus epsilon s E s. So, I just substitute here. So, from here I get V ox is equal to minus Q s by C ox. So, what did I do that this expression in which I know at threshold how much is psi s 2 phi f and that I know because it is only function of any NA, NA by n temperature N A by n i ln of ln by n i into k t by q twice of that is twice k t by q. So, I know psi s I know now we are because if I know q s which is the charge in the semiconductor charge density please remember this is all density per unit area that is why this is per unit area this is per unit area. So, it is a voltage. So, if I now have a term which is I know Q s directly otherwise I know C ox anyway because the oxide thickness has started with T ox. So, I know how much oxide thickness I have and therefore, I know the oxide capacitance is that clear. So, I know my V ox once I know my V ox at V t one can therefore, say psi s is 2 phi f minus Q s by C ox at V g s equal to V t this q s at that time. So, at how much is q s at the v when the inversion starts q n a x d max is that correct q n a with a minus sign because the negative charge. So, we say this ok. So, at threshold voltage therefore, I have a 2 phi f term which is known to me I can calculate and this is minus for n channel minus q n a x d max by c so, one can see from here every term is known from the device doping concentration is known from where you can calculate phi f. I know phi f so I can calculate x d max because it is a function of any and psi 2 phi f. So, I can calculate the q s by c ox term I know 2 phi f. So, I know my threshold ok. So, my threshold that is how I know threshold. Since this quantity is minus and the sign here is minus and 2 phi f as I say band bending down phi is positive. So, both terms are positive adding to each other which means threshold for n channel device is always positive. However, this statement is can be modified little later, but uh, that is what we want threshold of a n channel device should be always positive. If it is 0 or negative what does that mean? that the inversion has set in even at 0 bias because threshold is lower. So, by the time you reach 0 volt already inversion has is already available and that was one of the major worries in earlier technologies. We started with as I said earlier we started with P circuit P device circuit for simple reason because getting the other two term which I will show you now were so strongly negative that the V t used to become net negative. And once that becomes then that means device is always on in terms of device called depletion mode it is already in the depleted situation ok which means always on ok. So, you have to go minus higher voltage to switch it off 
in a circuit we never wanted that to occur we want on off particularly for digital for example so zero to something is switch on now that was not possible so we said okay look for p channels in p channel this is negative this value will become plus q n d x d max so this will minus sign will hold this will be minus the other two terms are always minus so all the terms which you will get is minus v t but p channel i want a minus v t so if there were situation those two terms which are minus only may add to minus value more so to turn on a device you will require much higher minus voltage so that it crosses v t that was possible because okay instead of 3 volt i may put 5 volt supply if 5 it doesn't i will put 10 volt supply minus of that however if i if i have a minus v t for a p n channel then i have a problem that i cannot then turn it on at normal biases and that is why i say we started with so what are those two terms which caused so much worry for most of us there are two assumptions we made so far one is we said the, there are no charges in the oxide in reality they are there are charges very close to the interface okay they are normally always positive normally i am not i will not uh, i will not go too detail on that they are called fixed charges and normally within 100 armstrongs from the interface they are situated now take a situation in which you have a charge at the interface what is the problem with us if i have a device and uh, this is my oxide and this is my semiconductor let us say positive charge occurs very close to the this is oxide and this is semiconductor what it will do i have not applied bias but this positive charges itself will now expect negative charges to appear in semiconductor to balance the charge neutrality that means anyway by vgs what we are going to create negative charge so even without vgs i have some charge already available is that clear to you already there are charges available to you similar thing happened if you have a metal okay this is your metal our assumption is between metal and silicon the work functions are same work functions means the energy taken for electron to leave the material is called its work function we assume initially phi m is same as phi s but in reality the material will have different phi ms for example if you put aluminum as the gate aluminum has a 4.2 electron volts as phi m where semiconductor is typically 5.2 minus phi s phi f values will just around 5 ev for example so it means phi m s phi m minus phi s is negative quantity for aluminum even with the silicon gate which we use poly gates as we say the polarity of poly and the uh, substrate will be opposite so there will be again difference between phi m and phi s which essentially means it is normally and normally depends on the metal used there something you use phi m s is always negative that means if phi m s is negative it also want something additional already available to you semiconductor is already having some negative charges already sitting there we also have positive charge which also is already created this so normally how do we measure equivalent level so we say okay apply additional as if this voltage so that the equilibrium is that in fermi level on both sides is are equal this is called flat band okay and from there we now say in inversion can be set in but that this additional voltage was already Uh, already charges were available that much you won't need now actually this is already present with you without worry now the problem is this is giving you negative both values on negative charges and you are going to create some negative charges due to vgs but these charges may be sufficient for the inversion to be there which essentially means that the device is pre pre at zero itself at is an inversion this essentially is the worry which means the vt of a n channel transistor could be fully negative two terms were positive but these two next two terms which i'll now show you may be strongly negative compared to these two positive terms and here is that expression i am talking about this is my 25 qsc ox is what normal vt would have been but two assumptions i made q ox is zero which is not zero and phi ms is zero which is also not zero So if I add those two terms without going into details of band diagrams, because some other day specific someone wants come to me, 
I will explain to you Mohan's theory even much more in detail. So, why we say that? Because that is our brain and mass transistor we have been working for 25 years or 30 years okay, or maybe more 35 years. So, I, for us it is very trivial to understand what is going on, but for you it may be interesting some of you not all of you. V t is equal to phi m s plus 2 phi f minus q ox by c ox. This relation comes from the fact uh, you can see from here why did I say total charge initially was 0, but if there are oxide charges this is the new equation charge neutrality. If that occurs we can say q m is minus q s plus q ox and this I call since this is fixed I call it q s dash okay. and then I substitute here q s dash. Okay because that is a constant value q ox is always fixed from the technology positive always known to me how much. If that is so I will get additional term of minus q ox by c ox here ok. Now, this is negative please remember in the expression this term is coming negative this is positive this is negative this is positive because minus q n a. So, this but these two terms may offset these two positive terms. This has happened because initially when technology started in 60s, the q ox was extremely high in the process we made. Okay. It was of the order of what we say 10 to power 12 per centimeter square as the density multiplied by charge it will be coulomb per centimeter square. So, it was a very very high charge density was available in the interface. So, whatever we do for n channel it will always be on in respect to what we do. Now, we figured out in 20 years 15 years down then that I can control q ox by technology details I can do something which will reduce my q ox. Now, I can do a q ox of 10 to power 10 per centimeter square into q of course, which means this term will be very small and in which case this may not be strongly negative of course, this I cannot play much this is a inbuilt gate whatever I create but this stronger term may become smaller and then the net value may become positive. Now, one catch from all this if I want to increase V t with a given q ox and phi m s what is the term I should improve on. So, that the V t goes higher that is the circuit requirement from here expression can you check, check what should I increase in a the doping in the substrate if I enhance. I will be able to enhance the threshold voltage that is the control that word which I say control I can do some technology control now I say ok boost the any ok. It may have something else a problem so I will ok selectively boost the any wherever I want that is in the channel only I have higher doping substrate I do not have which I can selectively dope the device ok. So, the way thresholds could be adjusted also you can have very interesting thing you can have two areas or two separate transistor may have a different dopings and we have a multiple VTs on the circuit itself. So, tomorrow you design a good analog block or a digital block and you expect variable VTs technologically it is called additional mask ok extra one mask is typically cost around 1 million dollars on process ok. So, you say one mask 1 million dollars another V t is 31 another mass for just for that another million dollars ok. Typically 24 masks are required for making a good chip at CMOS chip or an equivalent of a chip. Now, you add this as now ISO new technologies are coming and many controls are being given you may require 34 mask. So, now remember how much money per mask you are adding that adds to the chip cost ok. So, what Intel Pentium 4 initially was sold maybe 140 dollars and now they may sell it 200 dollars because now I have improved something which is multiple something I am giving you which can control your power requirements. So, all technologies cost you on that of course, if you make billions and trillions that cost may actually go down that is what the whole game in the circuits are. Okay. So, is that clear? So, the basic idea of a mass transistor V t control is to control uh, alternatively you can also control it from C ox or T ox, but T ox is not very much in mind is a technology dependence 
I say okay, 90 nanometers should have so much thickness of oxide, 0.25 should have so much. I mean that's the technology. So I'm not very much within my this. But if I see C, there is an absolute term going on. Oh, so I can need not work on silicon dioxide. I may look for other dielectric with higher absolutes. Okay, and in that case, high K dielectrics actually came up. Okay, of course they have their own problems. So in general. A typical capacitance voltage characteristics of a MOST capacitor looks something like this. This is for n channel device. What does please remember P substrate always gives you n channel device, n substrate will give you P channel device. So, this is n channel device means P substrate device. So, we apply what is the threshold for P channel n channel device positive. We assume right now that Q ox and these are small enough, so they still shown Vt. So, if I have VGS negative, since there is an accumulation, you can see in accumulation there are plus charges and there is a metal charge plus plus. So, it is a good MIM capacitor, metal insulator, larger charges mean equivalent metal. So, you have a metal insulator metal. Okay. So, fantastic capacitance came. Okay. So, you say C ox is the only capacitance available when you are in accumulation. However, if I start increasing VGS towards positive, somewhere down I said as you cross 0, VGS becomes positive depletion starts, the depletion layer starts and you start getting negative charges due to depletion. Now what can you see? You have already seen that figure which is a capacitive figure. You can see from here this is metal, this is uh, sorry this is metal, this is oxide this is the inversion layer and also there are acceptors here. Yes, okay. Now, this has two capacitance now, one due to the oxide and one due to the semiconductor. Semiconductor charge means it is equivalent of a capacitance there and you see they are in series. So, what we say therefore, it is like saying you have a C ox in series with C s which is semiconductor capacitance. So, after VGS becomes positive, there is a semiconductor capacitance which is essentially how much? Epsilon x by x t. This is k s epsilon naught, k s is the dielectric constant, epsilon 0 is free space permittivity. So, this is di please remember epsilon is k silicon n to epsilon 0 silicon dielectric constant of silicon dioxide is 3.9. Okay. So, epsilon s is known to me because this is 8.854 10 to the power minus 14 per, hour centim per centimeter. So, I know now this is series uh, in compared to C ox. What will happen if you have a series capacitance? The net capacitance seen between these two nodes will what, what will be? It will decrease you are in series. As you increase VGS, XD increases, CS decreases. So, what will happen to the net series? C further goes down, okay. C further goes down because CS is started going towards smaller value. As this reaches maximum, you will reach CS minimum. Okay. Now you cannot have further depletion layers, okay. XD max has reached. Now, the net capacitance is C ox in series with C s minimum, where this will occur this x d max when the threshold occurs. So, if I keep increasing V g s somewhere at V g s equal to V t, I reach C s minimum. So, the net capacitance then becomes constant. Now, this is slightly catch I showed you two curves, one shows constant and the other shows it goes back to higher value of its original C ox. This is essentially because of the uh, frequency of measure. How do I measure a capacitance? I apply a current source or a voltage source through a resistor and pass current through a capacitor. So, what is the current through a capacitor? C dV by dt is the current or j omega C times V is the current in the capacitance. If I know my omega, and I measure the impedance on the impedance bridge and I know what currents I am voltage or current I am pushing, then I will be able to evaluate the capacitance, okay. assuming R's are practically 0. Once I know 0, but then 
that omega term appeared there. That means, the frequency at which I am monitoring will give me the impedance. If omega is very small 2 pi f, then I am in a low frequency zone. If I omega is megahertz, tens of megahertz or 1 megahertz and above, I say I am in high frequency range. Now, why this at high frequency what happens? When I apply higher frequency, basically what I am doing? I have a DC over which I am superposing AC. If the frequency of AC is this, whatever this capacitance here I was monitoring, I must say that the depletion charge must vary with the frequency because you are going plus minus. Okay. At much higher frequency, depletion charge cannot follow that. Is that clear to you? So, it shows constant value, but at very, very low frequencies, it has time constants available enough that it also modifies. So, the average value of capacitance now starts increasing as I increase VGS and at maximum VGS, it shows as if it can follow anything like 1 hertz if I do it, it will go back to its original value, more details other books. So, the idea is I can measure for a given technology a mass capacitance at high frequencies or low frequencies together individually otherwise that is what all that all that my other colleagues in the so called device area only thing of course, should not say only major thing they measure is a CV measurement and keep telling we did great research. This is all that we do okay. keep measuring CVs. Okay. At the end for the circuit what I am really looking for equivalent circuit. I am not interested as I say yeah I this theory I did fine I why it satisfied my ego oh I understood okay. but for a circuit how does it matter it only wants equivalent put it what you want to equivalent of that. So, we figured out in a MOS transistor shown here just for the sake of forget about this figure right now you can write down this expression there are three capacitances of interest at the input side which are the three. One is gate to the bulk, which is called CGB, gate to the bulk, bulk means substrate. There is a capacitance between gate to the source, so we call that is CGS. Now, you say from where this is coming, if you see the expressions, uh, this MOS transistor, just a minute before I will come back, you can see from here there is a depletion layer here, so there is a diode sitting here, there is a diode sitting here diode has a capacitance and the reverse bias both are reverse bias anyway. So, diodes have capacitances so as to bulk okay. which side has a higher capacitance no no drain side has a larger depletion layer now. So, smaller capacitance, but smaller capacitance have more difficulty than a larger capacitance if they come in parallel or in series depends how do they come. Now, there is a capacitance of from the gate to the bulk, okay. but if there is a channel bulk is screened because then there is only small r in series to that is that correct. So, we CGB is 0 if there is a channel existing, once channel exists the bulk is screened that means there is no connection with the capacitance is that clear. So, these otherwise if there is a short channel here there will be a capacitance here oxide capacitance and also bulk capacitance. So, these are the capacitances associated with now what we do here which is what the trick we are saying in a MOS transistor in fact if you see all positions have different capacitances we will see later the channel does not have same thicknesses. Okay. So, the voltages across every point is different so essentially we saying we are n capacitance going from source to drain all in parallel. So, what is the model we can do for a circuit? We say lump it out half this side, half this side and remove them. distributed something solving is a difficult task it is like a transmission line theory RC RC network solving. Here I say okay, use lump models. So, there is the catch word I am using analog circuit design essentially uses lump models is that clear as all the word derivations which we will do later are essentially assuming that lump models are valid. Once you say lump models are not valid we say this is the highest frequency you can use because for the design you can only do this much that frequency we want to know up to where 
my circuit will function. Okay. You know, at the end, I have to find now my analog circuit will function at 1 megahertz, 100 megahertz, gigahertz. Where is that cutoff which I have? Okay. Now, that frequency is essentially decided by what? Up to which frequency by the device you can have lump model model equivalently fitting the experiments. This is the basic understanding we use. So, beyond that, not that one cannot solve, but we will have to do something transmission line theories like we do in microwaves and probably one can solve a more microwave involved problem by using fields, but field theory is not so trivial. Third year people who would have heard it must be knowing about it. It is not very easy to pick up the fundas unless you know very well what is divergence and curl in a better fashion and to get that field has to be there. So, uh, we will say okay, we will use only up to lumped circuits and we will be safe in all our analysis. Is that clear to you? Is that point clear? How do we increase that frequency? Maybe we will see. We can I increase this cutoff to a higher level, higher level? How much higher I can go? Can I go to 100 mega gigahertz? Possibly yes, possibly no. So, we will see that. So, my issue is that I must know my capacitances because if you see my earlier circuit, which is that equivalent circuit I drew for you first day, first point, where is that? Maybe, okay. If I have now a capacitor here, a capacitor here and many other capacitances, then I have a problem because circuit has a feedback. Circuit is connect, some input cannot be going beyond certain impedances shown here. That means, the limitation of a frequency will appear as soon as I get actual capacitance in the circuit. And that is what I want to know how much is the maximum frequency I can have so that I can operate my amplifier or whatever circuit I want at those frequencies. Now, this capacitances is what we are trying to figure right out how much are they. Of course, what I am showing here can be useful for even the digital course who are taking VLSI design course there. This is same, it does not matter here or there. Okay, so, we have three possibilities CGS, CGD, and CGB. Now, CGS which is gate to source capacitance, there are three regions of operation. What is sub V t? It is phi f is still there, but not 0, okay. but assuming right now that inversion is so small practically we are not assuming as if there. Okay. So, we say sub V t capacitance is 0, which capacitance will if there is no channel what is the capacitance I between gate and the bulk? So, C G B exist, okay, but C G S and C G D does not exist because there is no inversion at the either ends. Okay. So, we say C G S is 0, C G D is 0. This additional term which I have shown here is a that partial depletion layer which was coming there even at 0 bias is taken care and this is our oxide capacitance. Is that correct? Now, if you see the linear, what does that linear we are not just talk, but in which that V g s minus V t is less than V d s, assume right now that is called linear mode. In which case we can now lump it half C g half oxide capacitance to the source and half to the drain and then we say there is no C g v because channel exists both, so screened out. However, when the device is active mode or what we are interested in all the theory which we call saturated mode, we are just we will come to it soon now. At that time, it is a trapezoid of the channel and therefore, we say it is two third area into oxide capacitance. Since the channel is up to corner to this, the bulk is screened, drain there is no charge left there, so this is also screened. So, only capacitance available is C. So, in general what we do is for a general purpose irrespective where the device is operating, we add all these capacitors at zero in a DC case. Okay. If that occurs, you can see if you add any term which is very close to C ox, this is two thirds, so maybe one third plus add, so C ox is upper value of that. This also will give up, sorry, this is I think minus sign you just check. So, essentially, if I use only C ox. I may not be over, I may be overestimating 
that means my frequency actually will go down than what I expected really may happen, but I am safe. Okay. So, many a times the first design goes with Seox itself, okay, fine, thank you very much. Okay. Otherwise, if you are solving on a computer, how does it matter if the circuit is given all the specifications and all the values? So, it will calculate and substitute every voltage, whatever is happening, and use that capacitance at that point. Okay. So, in numerical analysis, I do not do any assumptions, I say this is the solution, you solve. In the case of analytical, I have worry because every time then I will have to remember or add correctly. Okay. So, I want to make some simpler assumptions, not that I may use this also, but I am just trying to show many books will say they are using every other CEOX. The reason why they are using is because of the assumption is that it is little overestimation, but fair enough. Okay. Okay, Let us quickly finish up the device part, so that uh, we will actually go on the major issue of our interest. But as I say why I am showing a device because I want to show you those parameters which process and design is required I mean design parameters from where they can be controlled because that is why I know want to know the theory otherwise for me expression is good enough. Spice maybe there are versions okay. we will only give you the first version why we are doing that because there are the problems which we may give will be only simulation problems and you must run SPICE. Okay. Essentially SPICE solves a small network. What is it solves? I is equal to G times V where all three are matrix. Is that correct? That is all that it does. Now, this G's could be voltage dependent, current dependent, could be source of system. Okay. So, that non-linearity certainly comes. Larger the parameter matrix may become bigger, larger circuit may have so many nodes to solve. So, the complexity of matrix solving may increase because of the nonlinearity terms and because of the larger sizes, is that clear? But basic idea is Kirchhoff law G into V is I, is that clear? So, that is what SPICE does. Now, what is G? You must know device parameters you must give so that it can calculate dependent sources. What is so, it needs data from the device, it needs data from the uh, connectivity from which node to what node, what component you are putting. Once it knows the circuit, it just does G is equal to V and you can calculate V or I any position, any mesh. Okay. That is essentially SPICE. What SPICE stand for? SPICE life mein bahut hota hai. Simulate to hai abhi to S word lagging hai na. Simulation program S SPICE I C integrated circuit E emphasis. Okay. This program was written by uh, Berkeley group headed by Professor Newton. Unfortunately, he is no more. Uh, uh, he was the provost of uh, not provost, he was the president of Berkeley some time, and uh, his group has written this program SPICE. Uh, now, all industry is actually working on SPICE, but they have modified model, they have modified few things, and then keep telling. Oh, this is our mind. The uh, mentor graphic has its own spice, some other specter nam denge, basic spice ka hi mara hua hai. Okay. Reason is in if I have a uh, what we used to call a small routine, I may block that routine for anyone else. So, I may still run spice there for outsider you say I do not know what program I ran there, you know. I just call from somewhere run that. Okay. So, everyone is using spice in one way or the other, okay, H spice synopsis came with some other name okay, because they say it is it takes care of both high power and high frequencies as spice okay, some better models they put. But basic idea is G V is equal to I and nothing more than that is that clear. So, do not get too much read uh, and it is best thing to happen because then you can listen music, you can talk people things will be done by someone else for you. Okay. So, it is good. Okay, quickly we find out the current because at the end of the day for a circuit person, I want to know given a voltage on the device, what is the current I am going to get, okay, because that is what my model is asking, what is G. Okay. So, I say okay, I must find the relationship between currents and voltages. If I get that expression, some way I will convert into an equivalent source and if I do that, I, my job is over. So, I figure out what is the mass transistor doing, if VGS is greater than VT on a n channel device, VSB is 0, source is 0 
and I am applying positive VDS and I am applying positive VGS greater than threshold. There can be two possibilities of course, but first we say VGS is large enough, okay. VGS is large enough and VDS is relatively smaller. Please remember once VGS is greater than a channel may exist in the substance. As soon as channel exists the one shown here, okay, this is source, this is drain. How does it look? This is an n plus area, this is n plus area, this I am applying plus VDS small enough, but and this I am grounding. What does it look like? A semiconductor bar with voltage VDS on one side and ground at the other. So, it is like a resistor, a small resistor. Since it is like a resistor, which law I am following? Ohm's law or drift current only flows. Okay. J sigma E is the equation of drift currents. Sigma essentially is conductivity, which is related to resistance. Okay. Since Ohm's law is to be followed, now I must know what is R, because if V I know and I want to know I, so I must know V by R, R is what I calculate for this device. This is what all that we do when we solve it. So, the first assumption we make, there are three electric fields or rather two strongly field electric fields. Let us say this direction downward is x, across the channel is y and along the third dimension plan dimension it is a z. Okay. This is the axis I used. So, you can see from here if this is x there is the electric field downwards positive VGS which I call is E x across upside. Because there is a current in the channel there is a voltage means there is a electric field this divided by lengths equivalently not okay. So, there is a E y and there is E x. So, the first assumption I make E x is much greater than E y, which is called gradual channel approximation. We can remove that. What is essentially telling that the electrons available in the channel are essentially governed by the gate and no one. Is that clear? Upper se hi control hai, nowhere else. So, gate is controlling the charge. Is that clear? So, this essentially says E x is stronger than this. So, this controls the charge. Okay, that is what gradual channel approximation is all about. Or to say the inversion charge is what is the charge density is capacitance per unit area into voltage. So, if you see it what is the capacitance here C ox just at this place. What is the voltage you can see from any point here? I applied a VGS here. Okay current is flowing in this electrons are going in this. So, current is going in this direction uh, drain to source. Since this is a resistor what does that mean? At every point of the channel that is from y is equal to 0 y is equal up to y is equal to L there is a voltage drop. What is the net voltage drop at L? VDS which I applied, but at the source 0 from 0 to VDS there is a voltage drop everywhere is that correct. So, if I take a channel let us say this is my channel and at any point here y this is my y is equal to 0 and this is my y is equal to L at any point on the channel I use an element of the channel d x as such and then I say ok if I can calculate the resistance here by rho L by A expression and then integrate it out across the channel length across the x both side. I take a piece and I actually integrate on x side and integrate on y side to get the net equivalent average resistance and i is equal to v by r that is what I am doing. So, I figure out the charge density is v g s if I apply v g s minus v t because that is required for inversion minus V y because at every point now substrate is equivalently saying at V y. In normal case of capacitance substrate was grounded. Now, at the lower side of the voltage is potential there. So, what is the voltage across the oxide now? V g s minus V t minus V y multiplied by capacitance per unit area will give me the charge density available of electrons in the channel below. Is that clear? Now, this is an approximation. 
more accurate expressions can be done, but we just see. We also know from the very simple uh, electrostatic law, uh, electromagnetic electrostatic laws, the current in a resistor essentially is Q times velocity times the width. The width comes because as if you have a number of such channels and you have to add all of them. So, multiply by W, okay, assuming that is constant. Okay. That means, this W is uniform throughout. So, if I do that, I have a Q V W is the, this is charge per unit area, please remember. What is the velocity there? Mobility times the electric field, is that correct? I have a drain current which is charge density, electron charge density into velocity and velocity is essentially mu E y into width of the channel. Better expressions can be derived, but just to take from this. So, if you now know I d s, if I know my q n which is here, I assume now mu is constant, but in reality mu is also not constant. So, we have to take care of mu variations. E y, how much is E y? 0 to L, it goes from 0 to V d s. How much is the voltage across channel? As the length goes from 0 to L, voltage goes from 0 to V d s or V d s, is that correct? So, if I integrate these two terms which I am going to, then I will get net average I is equal to, uh, I d s equal to average resistance multiply equal to voltage across that. This is what I do. The second assumption which I make, which I said V is equal to mu E is constant is always available, but that is not true because if E increases too much, the velocity starts co becoming constant. So, right now my assumption is V is not reaching V set, which me actually. Okay. So, there is another assumption I made. First assumption, what did I made? E x is much stronger than E y. Second, I made assumption velocity is still not saturated which what does when this can occur? What is the electric field? Is V d s divided by length. So, when E y will be smaller either the V d s is smaller or L is larger, larger channel link devices called long channel devices. So, in a long channel devices this assumption is good enough we say velocity does not saturate. What is the new problem will now come? As you go for smaller and smaller dimensions, the velocity will become saturated day one okay? and that is our worrisome part as we come to the models. Third assumption I made which is also an assumption that net current in the channel is essentially drift current. That means, that is the only current I have which is the other possible current in a semiconductor diffusion, uh, diffusion current. But I say there is no diffusion current, there is no gradient though there is, but that current is say million times smaller than the other. So, I say there is nothing there. So, the third assumption say only drift current occurs. This is also an assumption in real devices if you are doing a device simulation uh, projects or something you can get rid of all such assumptions and get exact values. But to a great surprise you will find it does not give the exact experimental result in spite of great modeling. Then finally, what you do? You try to fit some parameters which fits into experiment. Once you try fitting, then whole physics is lost. Okay. So, physics and fitting do not go together, but what do I do it? I still want to retain my physics, so I add constants to it, maybe less than 1 or exponential some term, which is say constant. You say. So, it is called fit constant, fit functions. So, keep physics with some fit functions, okay, weightage. And then you say, oh, it fitted my physics also, it is good. My, you are just trying to fool yourself by why choose the same physics? You could have written alpha 0 plus alpha 1 x plus alpha 2 x polynomial 100 ke baad kuch na kuch to fit ho jayega. Alpha kuch bhi adjust ho jayenge. Aisa nahi hai. Oh, physics rakhna, usko constant vary karna. Spice, what does it do in model? As you scale down technologies, it changes its constants, fitting functions, because experimental given technology is known to you. So, you try to come closer to it and you say look I have got exact physics and exact fits. Okay. This is game all device simulation people including me play. Okay. As I say I already said new structures and new smaller devices diffusion current may not be 
as small though we do tricks so that it becomes smaller. There is another assumption I mean we assume as I said mu is constant but in real life mobility varies with electric fields ok. So, even mobility is not very much constant it is a function of y it is a function of x also ok. x it comes from what we call interface state density right now we will not go into. So, mu is not even a constant but all these assumptions when you make and get IDS VDS characters what do we call textbook model which probably and then the actual model what will be give it k1 k2 something so that it fits to the reality ok. So, I said look this expression I am still using now that is the game all spice models people do ok including us. So, if I now substitute using first order assumptions I write E y is d v by by d y electric field is slope of voltage ok v y. I substitute in this expression which I wrote I write I d s d y is w mu c ox v g s minus v t minus v y into d v by y changes from where, where 0 to L v y varies from at source 0 voltage at drain v d s I integrate from 0 to L to 0 to v d s and I get this expression I d s is mu c ox w by L bracketed v g s minus v t v d s minus half v d s this is the simple integral of this. What is it trying to say? Mu is constant that is why it has come out before integral. I also assume as I say V t constant which may not V t is a constant value. So, I just in differential integral I did not use that I said V t is constant. In real life even that may not be constant ok. Now, this in my analysis uh, analytical and see I use mu c ox term I call it beta dash is that correct and this beta dash into w by l I call beta which is like telling uh, you know bipolar transistor used to have a gain factor. So, this is equivalent of a gain factor ok. So, I may use in my final expressions beta beta dash is mu c ox and beta is beta dash into w by l this is my writing it is not necessary you can keep writing mu c or w by l everywhere and fair enough this is just to reduce the size of the expressions I write is that ok. I repeat how did I do it I wrote q v w as my current I know v is mu v so an e I had substituted d v by d y then I figure it out I can integrate this from 0 to length because that is what the resistance blocks are ok. So, I just summed it them all and once I sum them all I get this relationship ok. Now, the trick worrisome part is now after you write down this expression you will find if I really plot this I d s versus V d s characteristics then I am some funny characteristics I suddenly see. Now, the fun starts here if I plot this expression I d s this expression ok for all values of VDS ok. I figure out initially you can see from here if VDS is smaller initially this term is small and IDS is proportional to VDS. If VDS is smaller please remember half VDS square term is smaller neglected. So, IDS is beta times VGS minus VT and if VGS is fixed by me IDS is proportional to VDS that is why it is called linear mode IDS is proportional to VDS. What is the condition VGS minus VT is much larger compared to VDS and therefore, this term is neglected. <coughs> However, if this assumption does not go and I keep increasing VDS that expression now says as VDS starts increasing the current start decreasing because minus half V d s square term start increasing is that correct and at some this V d s actually I d s is 0 it is going down. So, it looks parabola because that expression is half square I mean parabolic. So, it shows a parabola, but in real life no one has seen that beyond certain voltage current suddenly dropping down that means current remains constant people have seen that expressions ok uh, uh, characteristics. So, what has happened? So, we say ok in real life if there is something has to happen like this the this point I must know where this can start. So, 
So, I said okay, what is the maximum value up to which current is still one directional? So, I differentiate this equate it to 0 and I get V d s equal to V g s minus V t at the point beyond which the current will fall. So, there must be something related to this point V g s minus V t equal to V d s is the issue at this point onwards something else is happening. Certainly, linearity is not there and no other term going higher negative. So, that current goes down. Now, what is beyond then this value? Beyond this V g s minus V t if I further increase V d s, I do not get this. So, the theory is something which is what device is very interesting about. Is that plan clear? In reality, I never see going down, but the expression shows it should go down, okay. it does not. So, what could have happened at this voltage beyond? Now, this voltage is very crucial as if you see when the threshold occurs in a capacitor, if you see you have a capacitor, this is your metal, this is your substrate. What is happening? V g minus V s is the voltage across oxide. This should be greater than V t to have inversion or plus or minus water. If it is plus, then I want inversion to occur here. Is that clear? This is how we defined it. Essentially, now saying if V g minus V s is less than V t, there is no channel. Is that correct? That is what capacitor theory says. So, look at this transistor. If you increase V d s beyond V g s minus V t or at that point when V g s minus V t is equal to V d s, what does this value essentially saying? This is V g s, this is V d s. Is that correct? This is 0. So, all voltages are measured from 0 V g s as well as V d s. So, V g minus V d is nothing but V g s minus V d s is that correct because source is grounded V g minus V d is same as V g s minus V d s. So, if I use this expression V g s minus V d s this is at this point is occurring is that correct. If now V d s increases beyond this point what will happen? this quantity will become minus. So, there is no inversion possible. So, just beyond this point V g s minus V t is equal to V d V d s beyond this value V d s increase there is no inversion at that end. So, you what you see here there is no inversion when V d s reaches V g s minus V t value. Please remember source is grounded is that clear? Gate voltage you are in fixed very high, but higher than V t. So, at the source there always will be channel because V g s is always greater than V t that is we started with. So, source will have a channel all through, but at the drain end at the point when V d s becomes V g s minus V t channel is not existing at that point is called pinch off. So, channel is pinched off. But since V y is varying along this point, so V g s minus V y is decreasing along this line, which means the number of electron density available in the channel will keep on changing as you move from source to drain. Larger here because the maximum potential is given by you V g minus 0, is that clear? In between smaller, smaller at the end it may become 0, okay, which essentially means the channel thickness will be maximum at the source and will keep on decreasing towards drain end. Normal in case of channel existing throughout even then it will be something called trapezoidal sorry it is a trapezoid, but if you further increase it may actually pinch at the other end and it may become triangular. So, initial tra trapezoidal channel will become then triangular is that correct this point we call device now enters saturation at this point that means V d s greater than V g s minus V t device is entering saturation. So, what does that means? In the case of bipolar I do not know how many of still recollect 
when I say a I, ICVC characteristics and I say device is in saturation mode, what does that mean? Actually, VC is very small in a saturation. The reason we say, okay, both junctions are forward biased, okay, IC become maximum. So, we say this is the saturation. In MOSFET, that is called linear region, the current when it becomes constant saturated, we say you are in saturation. That is the uh, name change from there. So, now if you declare this that pinch occur here, I, I further increase VDS, what will happen? Current is increasing. So, this point may actually shift from the drain end to this because now VGS minus VY itself may be small enough to pinch that channel that point, which what does that mean? You may have this pinch of point shifting from drain towards source as I increase VDS beyond this value, is that correct? Now, the question in physics was that if you have a channel which is pinched here, this is my source, this is my drain okay. and I am applying a VDS which is greater than VGS minus VT. Electrons were moving in the resistor, but what is here? The depletion there, there is no free carriers there. So, why carriers should go? There is no current, current should have gone down 0 immediately still did not go. This is essentially saying this is a depletion layer, this is something like this, it is a large depletion layer. There is in this depletion layer you have a large electric field, the direction is positive to negative. This large electric field whichever carriers are coming from here are sucked by this electric field and brought down to the drain side. This is essentially how bipolar transistor works. As the carriers reach base collector junction, the electric field there is so high, it collects, okay. same procedure. Is that clear? Otherwise, the current should have gone to 0 suddenly, it did not, it actually sucked out. Okay. So, larger the field here, the current, what, but how much is the current? Whatever this resistor can give you, only that much carriers can be picked up. That is decided by your VGS, VDS values, you are already decided. But once it reaches there, at that point, whatever carriers are available to me, I will just pull, pull it up. Okay. Is that point clear? This is a reverse bias p n junction theory. Whatever is available will fall down. Okay. How much I am not sure. Whatever you say, I'll, I will because that slope is so high, electric field is high, it will fall down. Okay. This is the theory behind the pinch of head. If I do this, and if I substitute those VGS minus VT, I call this value saturation at which at a given VG value VGS minus VT reaches VDS that value is called VD sat, okay, it saturates. Now, why current become constant? That is still not answered by us. The current is becoming constant because as you increase VDS, the net this triangular part whatever it is, the charge density is only governed by VGS. So, that is not changing, is that correct? So, the available carriers are not really changing for you, because as I said gradual channel approach, jitne upar se utne milenge. Apne aisa kiya ya aisa kiya, carriers utne the, which essentially current cannot now change, because whatever has happened has is remained there. So, current becomes constant or saturated. So, it is essentially now trying to tell the following. It is telling me if I plot a IDS versus VGS character, what is this curve called? IDS is the output current, VGS is the input voltage transfer characteristics. this is drain, this is this, for n channel this is direction. So, input to output relationship is called transfer. So, I figure out as long as V g s is small less than V t, 
how much is the current? It is not 0, I said at V g s equal to 0, it is 0 because there are there is nothing there. But as soon as you go beyond 0 till V t, oh, what is the situation? We are still in inversion, but small inversion, is that correct? V t was defined as 2 phi f value because it started at phi f itself. Okay. This region is called sub threshold region, there is a current going Okay, there is a current going on and it is exponential we will see later. But at V t which is what you say current then start going heavily okay. and as it starts V g s start increasing V g s minus V t takes over. In this case V d s is required why though V g s minus V t should be much larger than V d s, V d s is still required otherwise current cannot go. So, V d s is step kept in millivolts tens of millivolt to hundreds of millivolt and V g s varies from 0 to V d t. So, if you see the current starts shooting heavily V g s minus V t times. Now, this is the called transfer characteristics. If I do the output characteristics, so what do I output characteristics is? It is called I d s against V d s, please take it sorry, I just draw, I will show you. The potential between this is V d s which is essentially for output in most cases. Okay. So, if I plot I d s versus V d s at different V g s values, I get for a smaller V g s which is less than V t a very little I d s which is this current essentially flowing, two currents it is flowing, which are the two currents I have flowing here, one is sub threshold, what is the other current in a transistor can flow? reverse saturation current of the two diodes whichever is smaller one of them will flow is that correct that reverse saturation current plus sub threshold current is essentially small current this small word is not really small because in newer technologies that is my issue I said you in a one some day that 32 nanometer down the off current may be more than the on current that is why I use mobile constantly na, so that power drain come home. So, that is exactly the reason. So, off current shown here is very small. So, analog people are therefore not very happy to go to 32 nanometers or some 0 nanometers kind. Okay. We are worried actually. Beyond this value, initially current rises linearly, and for given Vgs minus Vt equal to Vds, you know, smaller Vgs, this point will be faster. Vgs minus equal to Vg small. So, V g s minus V t is small. So, v smaller V d s it becomes saturated. Larger the V g s saturation points goes above and above and different characteristics are seen. The only problem which I see here is something worrisome and that may be interesting as well. I just now made a theory which is said current becomes constant independent of V d s that is what I say whatever available I push. But in real life by monitor, I see on all such characteristics there is a slope. What does that mean? I d s is earlier I said in saturation it is independent of V d s, but it seems it is not independent of V d s, marginally varying, but varying. And another feature which we will see later, of course, not shown properly curves. If these slopes I actually extend it in the minus V d s time they all curves meet at one voltage okay. and that voltage we call is early voltage which is taken from early effect in BJTs. Okay. There is no early effect here, but the voltage is still given a name early voltage. There I C V C characteristics at different I V if you extend down at one value of all of them meet which we call as where the base gets punched. Okay. So, we say that is early voltage. Now, here also that effect is there. Now, that early voltage has some interesting value because then I can calculate my R0 if I give I am given a early voltage. So, that is the why I said early voltage. Now, I want to know if I had to represent this few minutes, these characteristics as an expression first and then once I know expression I can calculate from expression what? If I know I d s function of V g s and V d s. I can in differentiate with respect to V g s. So, 
so I get gm, I differentiate with Vds, so I get my R0. Okay. So, I must get a relationship first between Ids and which I first derived, but now let us see what can happen. If Vgs minus Vt which I defined as please take it Vgs minus Vt I defined as some books defined as Vgt, some books like Boyce and Laker's book, G, uh, Baker, Boyce and Lee's book define excess and I define over voltage my definition. Okay. Why so many years I am talking, so I do both. why I say over, over and above Vt how much okay, which makes transfer go. Of course, this is something taken from one of my old colleagues from Stanford, so I just use his this so VOV. So, in a book if you are having a different book same names will be a I am using VOV, they may use Vx or they may use Vgt whichever name they are giving. Please remember they are same what is it Vgs minus Vt is that correct. Now, we say if VOV is larger than condition is Vds that is Vds is small that means channel exists throughout device is in non saturation it is not saturated is that correct device is in non saturation the current can be given as beta which is mu c of w by l v o v times v d s minus half v d s square is that correct v g s minus v t is replaced by v o v. Okay. This is what mode when the channel exists throughout and that condition can only occur when v g s minus v t is larger than v d s. Once V g s minus V t reaches V d s we know it enters saturation. So, prior to this that means channel exists throughout okay. is that ok. So, in a non saturated mode the current is and why I say it was linear because if V d s is smaller I d s shows linear relationship with. So, for a smaller V d s you are more linear as you reach towards saturation V d s is not very small. So, you see curve cha slope changing. You can see from here as you reach here the slope changes okay, and that is the reason it changes. So, what is the model I am really doing it is called two region model one I will say like this the other is li sorry like this ok. Ek a region ek a region which ka kya karenge whenever there is an issue two models at that point must have same values okay, because that is the fixed value. So, at the knee point both models should give me same values this is that knee value I will say if that I get it I say fine two regions it fits now that word is fit okay. it fits and then I use two expressions independently as if they, I do not know what the other is doing okay. that is all modeling people do okay. device people do not do it they do not like that. If now you say VOV is larger than VDS and IDS is proportional to VDS, what is it looks like? You can see from this curve again on this region, you know, slopes are different, is that clear? A different VGS slopes are different. That means it is equivalently saying it is a variable resistor. As long as you are non saturated at any VGS, you have a different resistor is that correct linear is with a different r. So, a device acts like a variable resistors in non saturation as straight as that. However, if I now increase V d s further I say pinch off may occur at V o v equal to V d s or V o v is become smaller it may further get saturated heavily. Then one can see from here that expression which I will just show you may I will just repeat again if V o V is equal to V d s my expression writes I d s is equal to beta V o V into V o V minus half V o V square at this point this is the expression which is half 
theta v o v square. Is that correct? Half theta v o v square. So, what does this, does it have any relationship with V d s? No, as of now, we will increase that. So, what is it acting like? I d s is independent of V, uh, v d s. What is it looks like? Output current source. So, a transistor in saturation acts like a which current source? Voltage control current source VCCS, okay. it acts like a VCCS. Okay. So, sab logo ko achha lagta hai, the graphical kuch dikhaya jaye. So, ek chota graph hai, VDS versus VGS I am shown here. If VGS is less than VT, and V O V is you are less than V D S is less than V O V. This region is sub threshold. Anything below V O V, V G S minus V T is greater than V D S, and V D S is smaller than V G S minus V T. You are in non-saturation, which means you have a variable resistor, and V O V is smaller than V D S, and V G S is whatever it is for this value. You are in saturation which acts like a current source. Is that clear to you? This is what equivalent of a MOS. So, now I know if I see a MOS transistor depending on the voltages I am using in my circuit, I can replace the device by equivalent current source or equivalent resistor depending on the way I am working at. If I force the device to always remain in saturation, then what will happen? The MOS transistor will always behave like a current source that is exactly analog region. When the device V O V I characteristic shows slopes, both devices of P channel and N channel are in saturation. Therefore, we say the MOS transistor the analog is always like a current source, but the, at the edges it does not. So, signal if goes beyond so called non linearities may set in. Finally, last expression for the day and we will stop here. In saturation, in real life I say there are slopes, ideas beyond saturation point also keep increasing very little way, I mean the slope is very low there. Now, if I see it is a very slow lobe, I can fit it this, okay. I fit the curve and I figured out this is my normal saturation current, I multiply it by lambda V d s. 1 plus lambda V d s, where lambda is called saturation parameter okay, which we can derive of course, is equal to what we call lambda dash by L, where lambda dash is equal to 2 upon Q substrate under root. We can derive all the theory of that. When the device is having a flat this from this characteristic, can you say if it is very flat, what does that mean? Lambda is 0. 0 flat as lambda increases as lambda increases 1 plus lambda V d s factor will start increasing the slope will start building is that clear to you. So, in a technology is more you can see it is substrate dependent it also is depending inversely proportional to length. So, if I want smaller lambda what should I do? You can see I want smaller lambda. So, I should have larger substrate concentration, but what does it will do? Increase V t. So, if I increase V t what will happen? My net current will go down okay. and I, as I later will say the GM will go down. Okay. However, the other possibilities I use longer length devices. So, is that now clear that in normal good device I want saturation to be very good. Okay. So, what should I use device lengths? larger than normal technology node. For example, you are working on 90 nanometers, you should not use channel length everywhere 90 nanometers, use it 180, 270 something, 2 times, 3 times. So, the analog functions will be better because of lambda will become smaller. Is that clear to you? This is the crux of all analog design, how much channel lengths you should use. Longer channel devices therefore, will give you better analog performance any day is that clear to you. 
that is why 0 0.25, 0 0.35 micron technologies will give better analog performance and 65 nanometer, 45 nanometer will start killing you. Okay. How do I get rid of both? That is the design part.